The following organizations have made valuable contributions to this project. The Skerritt Bennett Center in Nashville, Tennessee. The Spirit Arts Science Initiative. Peace Films, Portland, Oregon. The Institute for Sacred Activism, LLC. And supporters and contributors like you. What is this holy, extraordinary, all-transforming experience for? The second coming, the birth of divine humanity, is going to be the rising of the golden yeast of Christ consciousness in millions and millions of ordinary people. God is so simple and we are so pointlessly and absurdly complicated. Humanity is entering into this time of amazing transformation. We're moving from a tribal to a post-tribal society, from uh, denominations to post-denominations. We're recognizing a radical new kind of interdependence and unity that doesn't get rid of human diversity, but doesn't lock us into a variety of competing and conformist camps. And at the forefront of this transformation is Andrew Harvey one of the great mystics of our time. I've known Andrew for decades. He's been my teacher through his writings and his lectures. He's been a friend and we've taught together. And he's been my spiritual mentor when I've had real deep wrestlings with the divine, especially within the context of the divine feminine, the divine mother. I've gone to Andrew and Andrew has always helped me understand what she is calling me to do and what she's calling all of us to do in this time of transformation. Listening to him is an experience. Not just the content of what he says, but the way he says it. The passion of the divine flows through him in a way that it flows through few others. In 1989, I had the honor to interview His Holiness the Dalai Lama in Oslo during the time that he won the Nobel Prize. And I spent two miraculous hours with him alone with a translator in a long oblong white room in a very, very dreary Oslo hotel. But nothing can be dreary when he is in the room. And it was a very extraordinary meeting for me. I had met him before, but to meet him on that day in that extraordinary celebration was such a feast of beauty for me. And at the end of the conversation, I found myself unable to stand up because His Holiness can go on saying he is a, just a simple monk as long as he wants. And it is so beautiful that he deflects adoration and pomposity and projection constantly. But anyone who has ever experienced him knows that there is emanating from him and around him a huge mystical field, a vast, tender, exploding, subtle power of infinite, clear compassion. And I was pinned by that to my chair 
And I imagine that His Holiness has had this experience many, many times, so he was very amused. He came, he stretched out his hand, and he hoisted me out of the chair, <laughs> and I found myself breast to breast with the Dalai Lama. I looked into his eyes and I said, I'm never going to be in a situation like this again on this kind of auspicious day, so I'm going to ask you a question that I've always wanted to ask you. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> and His Holiness became suddenly immensely calm and concentrated And he said, the meaning of life is to embody the transcendent. To embody the transcendent. Not to float off into the light. Not to lose yourself in the light. But to know your transcendent, formless ground, to know your origin in shunyata, in emptiness, in the void, in the fullness, in the self, whatever name you give to it. And then, to work with enormous focused intensity to illumine your mind with that knowledge, to open your heart to the wisdom of that awareness, and to bring that sober, lucid, drunken ecstasy of truth down, 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 into every cell of your body so that you come through grace and spiritual discipline into the unified force field of tender, humble, divine humanity and human divinity. So that from that placeless place absolute presence, you can act inwardly and outwardly to serve the liberation of all sentient beings forever. But His Holiness didn't just give me that key. because that's not his way. He then said, okay, we're going to walk from here to the door together, because I was reeling. And he took my hand in his, and we walked very, very gently, very softly, very tenderly, in total silence to the door. And then he very gently disentangled his hand from mine, like a mother would withdraw her hand from a child going to school for the first time going away for the first time, that kind of tenderness. And as I walked down the corridor of that hotel, I turned at the end and I saw this man who was about to be honored by the whole world 
in the greatest prize, I believe, that the world has to offer anybody, the Nobel Peace Prize, the greatest acknowledgement. I saw that man just standing outside his room, just gazing at this crazy Englishman, trying to walk straight down the corridor and radiating with his whole being, absolute love. So he didn't just tell me, he showed me. And as long as I live, I will never forget because it remains always for me a touchstone of authentic presence and final truth. That's it. To be like that. To love like that. is action at the highest level of reality because it transforms by its sheer radiance of truth.